Hey, what's going on guys? It's me Aiden. Welcome back to another video. Now today we've got a lot of Miraculous Ladybug news. So if you have anything that you want to skip to, I will have time codes down in the description below. But let's go ahead and hop right into this video. So first up for the day is a new movie clip, which I'm sure you all have seen. But just in case you have not, I'm going to go ahead and play that for you. Hey, hey Marinette. I've been thinking about the ball, and I thought... Maybe you'd like so yeah, this is the like first clip that we have that actually has audio and it's sounding really good. Everything looks really good. Now there is one part in there that may be a little bit hard to hear. And that's when Marinette says, I've been thinking about something and it's really hard to hear what she's saying. But I believe she's actually saying the ball. So essentially what she's doing here is asking Adrian to the ball. Now obviously her actual proposal gets cut off. But, you know, she's like, I've been thinking about the ball. Do you have any interest in, and it cuts off there, potentially going with me or something like that. Now, here's the thing. Adrian sounds really uninterested in Marinette. He's like, hey, Marinette, what do you want? <laughs> so, uh, you know, this has been confirmed by Miraculous Mexico. And basically, they said that the characters in this movie are going to be having a little bit different personalities than what we're used to, right? Because the movie is Jeremy Zag's rendition of the show. This is his version of it, right? So he took what Thomas made and changed it and made it his own. So these characters are going to be different from the ones that we're used to. You know, Marinette's just nonchalantly going up to Adrian, asking him to the ball. Adrian's very uninterested in Marinette, right? So it's going to be different. And I do think it will be interesting to see um, these interactions between the characters. Just know that it, it has no effect on the actual show, like, you know, the one through seven seasons or whatever, has no effect on that. So if you were concerned about that, don't be. It's just, you know, a different adaptation of the show. But overall, the movie's looking really good so far, and I'm super excited to go out and watch it. All right, next up, we have a new Soul Crusher promo. Now, this is the actual official one from the Miraculous YouTube channel. Uh, I can't play it, but I will leave it linked down in the description below. Really the only thing that I want to talk about in this promo, because most of it's just sort of stuff that we already assumed or wasn't super important or whatever, and that is Kent Noir saves Marinette. Because if you remember from the last promo, Marinette was sort of scooped up by Soul Crusher and we didn't know, oh, would she be saved? I mean, we, we could easily guess that she would be saved, but oh well. Uh, anyway, Kent Noir comes and saves the day, apparently. So, yay, Kent Noir, good job. All right, next up we have this really weird image that looks like Nino with a mustache. Now this was released by Winnie on Twitter and he left a caption saying, for those who can't see the difference between spoiling and teasing, see, this is the difference. Can you feel the difference? And I have to agree, you know, we don't really know what's going on uh, in this image. It just looks like Nino with a mustache, super zoomed in, hard to tell the background, stuff like that. So it's like, yeah, this is teasing, guys. You know, spoiling is different from teasing and Winnie has just teased this new image here. Now, why would Nino be wearing a mustache? Well, Mari on Twitter had suggested, could it be Queen Banana since they're recording a film? And I'd have to say, I really like this idea because, you know, that makes sense, right? You know, when they're recording a film, they're gonna have a lot of props. So what if Nino wanted to just join in on all the action be like, yeah, I wanna be like an official director. I got my mustache, I'm all professional. Oh uh, yeah, and then this could be like his dramatic entrance scene that we're seeing here. I don't know, I thought that was a really good idea because it makes sense, but other than that, I have no idea what this image could be. All right, next we got a few small clips from Queen Banana. I'm not gonna be talking about them since they don't really add anything new, but I would, I did want to show them off to you today in case you have not seen them, so here they are. Back, we have freut sich! Felizmente, também tem gosto para defender. All right, so next, let's go ahead and hop into the Optigami stuff, which is, I guess, the main focus of this video. Now, first up, we have a new synopsis, and I'm going to go ahead and read that now. Now, since Shadow Moth knows the identities of some of the superheroes, he forges a plan to find out the identity of Ladybug. To this end, Natalie creates a new dangerous senti monster, Optigami. Now, this synopsis is a little bit misleading because it's the wording can be a little bit weird because it makes it seem like Natalie creates a new senti monster like in this episode even though that was like right after the finale happened so the synopsis is a little bit weird in its wording but she created a new senti monster like right after the finale happened and then up until this point that senti monster has been going out and spying on ladybug 
Now to go along with the synopsis, we have two new trailers. Now that's a little bit of a misstatement because we did get one official trailer from Miraculous Ladybug, or the YouTube channel, and then we also got uh, Disney Germany releasing a small little clip of the episode, it's like two or three minutes. I will leave a link to both down in the description below if you have not seen it. The three minute clip from the episode is fully subtitled so you can understand it to its full extent. Now I have to say, this episode so far is looking like SAMG. Yes, the first episode that I can say confidently is animated by SAMG. Pretty sure, again, there's not, there's not official confirmation, but if you just look at it, Everything looks like SAMG animation, aside from some of the background characters, but, you know, I, I, my guess is they cut back on the budget a little bit, so they were just like, alright, do a little bit worse of a job, but, you know, it, since it's still SAMG, it's still leagues above everybody else, so, you know, despite them having, a, like, a little bit of a lower budget, they can't make the background characters and stuff look as good, um, just the main characters and the main battles and stuff is gonna look so good in this episode so far, Oh man, super excited. Plus, not to mention this episode itself just looks really good. So again, another reason to be super excited. So sort of just describing like what Optigami is, it's like a butterfly made out of origami, very similar to an Akuma, but obviously a Sandy Monster. So this Sandy Monster has gone around and followed all of the heroes that Hawkman knows the identity of. Now what this means is that he actually like remembered the identities. They Like his memory didn't get wiped once you know the lucky charm happened and stuff like that which is good they didn't go back on you know the the new plot that they had introduced in season three which i think is probably the right move plus this play and just proves that he's starting to use his brain a little bit so good job gabriel now since the holders are just normal teenagers they don't have anything going on you know aside from sometimes helping ladybug they're just completely normal they don't know anything i guess aside from alia but um, basically Hawkmoth was like, all right, yeah, so this is not working. I guess it was more of Natalie who was saying that this isn't working. And then Gabriel was like, no, you're, we're just not doing it correctly. So then he's like, yeah, let's go check out and try to get Optigami to inhabit a Miraculous. So then that's their new plan. So since Hawkmoth and Mayura have sort of determined that like, you know, the, these other heroes aren't important. We can't get any information out of them. That, I mean, I guess ensures their safety, but at the same time, it's like, can't you still blackmail their families? Like, I feel like you could pretty easily um, blackmail them and things like that. So, I feel like there's better things that Hawkbuck could be doing if he was using, you know, more than 1% of his brain. But, you know, I guess this plan that he put in place is better than no plan. So, I'll take what I can get. So that was all information that we learned from like that three minute clip of Optigami. The rest of this information is from the new official trailer. So the first thing I want to talk about is that Hawk Moth, or I guess Shadow Moth, I prefer calling him Hawk Moth. Um, Hawk Moth is at this awards ceremony. He's chilling out in the bathroom here. And I love it when he actually shows up because that means the episode's gonna be good. I don't know why, just whenever Hawk Moth is actually like there in person, the episode is instantly better. I don't know why. Now Shadow Moth creates this new senti monster Alec, and Alec goes out and causes trouble with Audrey, and this allows her to get mad, and that allows Hawk Moth to akumatize her. Hooray! Now Audrey is being re-akumatized into Style Queen, and we actually learn from Mr. Pigeon72 that she has been akumatized into Style Queen, I think four times it was, so this would make a fifth. So yeah, she has been re-akumatized a few times already. Now if you think back to season 2, and yes, season 2, it's been that long since Style Queen, oh man, time flies, doesn't it? But anyway, Ladybug had a really hard time taking out Style Queen, um, so this is why Hawk Moth was like, alright, yeah, let's, let's use her again, so that way Ladybug will have to distribute more Miraculous, and that will give me a chance to actually do my Optigami plan. Now, from this promo, we can tell that Carapace, as well as Rena Rouge, will be appearing in this episode. So, that's two heroes. Now, obviously, Cat Noir is at the ceremony, but Adrian's sort of, you know, in the award ceremony. Like, like he's actually receiving an award. So, it might be hard for him to get away and act as Cat Noir. Now, we also have to keep in mind that there's a lot of other heroes here as well, like the, like the entire class is here, so basically everyone, almost, can get a Miraculous, <laughs> uh, but we don't see them yet, so I, I don't know, like maybe they just weren't pictured, or maybe only Rina Rouge and Carapace are getting their Miraculous, 
Don't know, but uh, we can just find out in a few days when this comes out, or I guess it's closer to a week at this point. Now, the other really big thing that we learn is that Lady B is going to be appearing in this episode. Isn't that crazy? Now, why is this crazy, you may ask? Well, Linda Lee Rose actually released some images on Instagram. This was quite some time ago, maybe like a few months ago at the beginning of this year or late last year. Um, she released some images and we saw a Lady B concept, but she released a statement saying, yeah, Jeremy Zag, or I guess, I don't know Jeremy Zag specifically, but she was given permission to show these off because they were disregarded concepts. Now, where have we heard that before? It's not like Thomas has said the exact same thing about the new miraculous suit after she gives away a lucky charm or a magic charm or whatever. So a lot of old disregarded concepts being reused, I guess. I don't know, maybe they just changed their mind. But <laughs> anyway, uh, so we get Lady B here, which is great. But yeah, that's really all I wanted to talk about for this news for today. If I missed anything, or if you think I should have talked about another thing, please let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But that's gonna be it for me, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Goodbye. Done.